Hello out there in our Zoom chat. Yes, Mr. Johnson, I know I'm on here twice. One is my computer and one is this camera. I've been having Wi-Fi problems like I'm sure so many are, and I have been using my cell phone data like no one's business. Welcome to our high school students out there. Um, for those who don't know me, I'm Corey. Um, I'm the Chief Communications Officer in Leander ISD, and we want to welcome you to our chat. We have Superintendent Bruce Gearing. We have our high school principals on the Zoom webinar. This is our first Zoom webinar using this functionality, so please bear with us if we have technical difficulties. Um, the chat function is working. Um, you can talk to the panelists via the chat. You can talk to us via the Q&A. Um, so there is a Q&A option where we'll be answering questions. The bulk of what we're gonna be doing here today um, is answering questions. So please feel free to submit those as we get going. Um, we're going to get it started with our superintendent, Bruce Gearing, giving us just a, um, a heads up or a starting point as to where we're at as we've been living in this quarantine, shelter-in-place reality, um, not only here in the Austin area, but across the country. Dr. Gearing? Thank you, Corey. Uh, just give me a thumbs up maybe if you can hear me well. Great. It's wonderful to be here with you today uh, from far away in the virtual world. Um, I've, I know we have a lot of students registered to be on today. I love seeing all our high school principals here supporting us. Uh, it's great to see your faces, even though it's at a distance. Um, I really don't have a lot to tell you. The, the object of today is really for us to listen, for us to hear what's working well for you, what's not working so well for you, and to try to answer as openly and transparently as possible the questions that you might have. Uh, these are uncertain times. I don't promise that we have great answers for every question that you have, but I promise you that we'll try to answer them as best we can. Um, know that the team, administrative team behind the scenes is working extremely hard. You have a great board of trustees who supports every single student in this district um, and who is making the decisions that they believe are best for your future. And so uh, without further ado, I'll turn it back to Corey and we'll start trying to answer some questions. The key to Zoom is hitting the unmute and mute button as I continue to talk to myself in this Zoom world that everyone is living in. Okay, we got a lot of graduation questions. We're definitely gonna answer as many of those as we can. Um, there's a lot coming in on graduation as we deal with the governor's recent announcement that we're closed for the rest of the school year. And um, we're gonna wait for our assistant superintendent, John Graham, to get on the line to address those questions. I'm gonna start feeding um, Dr. Gearing a couple of these questions as we go through. Um, first off, we have a question from Keaton. Um, Keaton asked the question, Dr. Gearing, about second semesters for seniors. If rank and GPA are already set, can seniors be done with classes? Can you talk about um, the decision that the board made and the administration recommended regarding grading for the second semester and thoughts on um, seniors during this time um, while we're working from home. Yeah, thanks Keaton, that's a great question. And let me start by reassuring you that learning is more important than grades are. And so what we have determined as we really delved into how are we gonna do GPA and grading we wanted to be as fair as possible, number one, but most importantly, we wanted to be make sure that you have the tools necessary to be successful in the next step of your career, whatever that is going to be. And there are still a lot of things that you can potentially learn in this spring semester uh, to get you ready for that next step, whatever that is. And so our teachers are here to try to help you through as many of those learning times possible to get you as much mastery as possible in those learning targets. And you know, to be honest, that may not necessarily be content in some particular subject, but that may be questions that you have that need answering about whatever your next step is. So what I urge you to do is not take the second semester off and blow it off, but rather take it as an opportunity to do something amazing. Let's really dig in deep and see if you can get your questions answered, see if um, you can learn some things that you might not have learned if we were in regular school. So we know you're going to miss out on a lot of really uh, amazing opportunities in terms of award ceremonies and, and potentially graduation. But 
you know, there are a lot of things that you can benefit out of having this time. So let's try to make the best of, of those learning opportunities. There's a question that came in from Isabella and it matches a question we also got. We had some people submit questions um, via email to me beforehand. So I'm gonna to try to make sure we answer those as well. Um, there's questions about the academic school year and our calendar. Um, right now we are operating under the same academic calendar as if we were in person in our school building. So learning will continue until the end of our academic calendar as planned. Um, we, are, we have our teaching and learning team working on what summer school will look like um, and in terms of what summer programs will be. Um, Bruce, do you wanna provide some insight as to um, just in general what online schooling, um, what the future will be for remote learning based on the magic crystal ball I know we all have in terms of trying to predict um, this global pandemic? Yeah, so let's start with what we do know. We do know that school is closed until the end of the regular school year. And so those dates do not change. We are gonna operate on the exact same academic calendar as we have posted and approved by the board. Uh, so the last day of school will be that last Friday in May. Um, that doesn't change. Um, as we go into the summer, we're not sure exactly what's gonna happen with summer school. Some of that may start to become in-person. Some of that may still be online. Certainly as we head into August and the start of school, we really have very little idea about what that will look like at this point in time. Um, the closer we get to that, the better we will be able to determine what that's gonna look like. Um, it may well be a hybrid. There may be students whose parents do not want them to come back in person, even if others are coming back in person. And so we are going to be prepared for either or both eventualities. Um, but I assure you that if you are in an online environment um, in August, it will look slightly different to what you have now, uh, because we have to make sure that we really um, are learning from the experiences we have now and that we're being as rigorous as possible as we go forward. Thank you, Dr. Deering. We have um, lots of questions coming in about graduation. I just wanna let people know who are joining us as we continue on our webinar. Um, right now, we're waiting for our assistant superintendent, John Graham. I don't wanna put a single high school principal. Um, John is kind of the, uh, the lead for graduation for the district. I know he's gonna jump on here, so I'd like to let him handle the graduation questions and the questions regarding um, getting back into the school buildings. I, we know that um, there are students who have left things. We left abruptly for a spring break that we thought we were coming back for. Um, from, um, I know that we are working on a plan to allow students and staff back into buildings, but also making sure that we keep things safe. Um, Dr. Gearing, do you wanna, um, provide some insight. I know that's been one of the tough, tough things about um, this remote environment is knowing that there are belongings and personal items in our school buildings that our teachers and staff and students are looking to get. Um, do you want to talk about some of that, those discussions as to what we've been considering? Sure, absolutely. I think that uh, we need to understand our core philosophy at this point in time is to keep as many people out of our buildings and at home and safe as possible. And so we've been fairly strict with the lockdown of our buildings to make sure that that happens. We have been deep our custodial staff, fantastic job. Um, they've also been sitting that way for more than two weeks. So we're fairly confident that there are likely not any virus contaminated areas left in our facilities. That being said, we understand that people do have things that they will need to get before we release for the summer. Um, we also have need for classrooms to be cleared out in order for us to make sure that summer construction projects and some other things like that that need to happen over the summer are able to begin and uh, get done on time so that when we start school in August, we're ready. So with that in mind, uh, John Graham and his team are working out um, a way for us to get folks into the building at some point in time. I don't think this is an immediate uh, access. Uh, this will be sometime in the month of May. Um, we will be restricting that access pretty tightly. I will tell you that. We will also be staggering how many people can enter a building at a time. We will be managing that extremely carefully to make sure we maintain social distancing, to make sure that everybody is wearing the proper protective uh, equipment, 
um, and that we are making sure that we're keeping people well, healthy, and safe, uh, as, as well as getting them the things that they need out of their buildings. And so that includes staff. Um, we're going to try to restrict that access as much as possible again, um, but we certainly want to work with, with you to try to make sure that you get what you need out of the building. Dr. Gearing, we have a question um, from Devin. Um, now, I'm not asking for seniors to be done, but can we at least have somewhat enjoyable assignments? For example, I would like to read my book of choice, watch documentary, documentaries that interest me. Much of the work that we are given right now is simply busy work. I'm an IB student with all my tests canceled, so I don't see the point of this busy work. Um, do you want to talk about, I know personal learning is something of a passion of yours. Do you, what would advice would you give to students um, like Devin with that, um, facing that circumstance? It is, absolutely. And, and Devin, I hear you and um, I really empathize with, with what you're going through. Um, I urge you to reach out to your teachers directly. Um, you are essentially probably an adult by now. If you're not 18, you're very close to being 18. Um, you need to advocate for yourself in that respect. You need to know to do that respectfully, um, but, but passionately. And um, I know that your teachers will more than likely listen to that carefully. Uh, you also have the ability to reach out to these six magnificent principles that we have um, here today. They're also listening to you. They also heard what you just said. Um, and so I'm hoping that we really are looking at you know, what is important to you, what do you need as you progress to your next step and how are we gonna to try to meet that need? All right, Mr. Graham, thank you for joining us. We have lots of questions about graduation, about diplomas. Um, do you want to give the group an update on, on where we are with um, graduation? I know you shared some insight at the board meeting last Thursday. Um, what would you like to say to our, our seniors about graduation? So graduation is very important to us as a as a district as your high school principals are here. It is something that we have talked about as the group the importance of celebrating and honoring our graduates of 2020. How that looks we have not made any decisions. Uh, this past Friday the, the governor uh, stated that uh, we would be receiving guidance from the Commissioner of Education on what graduation uh, may look like. Uh, we know that um, in these uncertain times, we do not know exactly what the plan will be will look like, but the high school principals are actively meeting uh, to determine what graduation could look like in, uh, in many different ways. An in-person graduation, as we currently have planned, a graduation that may be virtual or what some of the high school principals are calling a, a social distancing type graduation, which is a hybrid model of virtual and in person. Uh, they are meeting regularly. Uh, they met today, they are meeting tomorrow, and we are meeting as a group on Wednesday to continue this conversation. Uh, but it is important for us to find some type of way to honor you as graduates of 2020. When we know all the answers, of what it will look like, uh, I assure you we will make uh, a timely announcement so you and your family can plan. Uh, but some type of ceremony is in the works. We just don't know what it looks like yet because it would not be um, wise of us to create a plan without at least waiting for the guidance that the commissioner may, uh, may provide to us. Uh, but we are actively seeking uh, uh, to create, or not seeking, but we are actively creating a plan for our seniors for 2020. John, there was a question about high school transcripts. Um, I don't know if you're, you're uh, I don't know if the, one of the high school principals might be a better one to answer this. Uh, my child is in need of final high school transcripts for college admissions. When will those be available if GPAs are locked? I am all for one of the high school principals answering that. They, met, they know a whole lot more about the transcript process than I do, right, right this way. Yeah, we would have to ask Kathy Neely is what I was told on that and see what the timeline is for that since the, uh, we just got the registrars back active this week. 
All right, Robert, I will make sure that we follow up on that question. Please look at our support page, so support.leanderisd.org, um, and we'll make sure we get an update on that um, later um, this week. Corey, they, they may be processing them already. I'm not sure, but I just know that there's some coordination going on between the registrars and Kathy Neely on that topic. Thank you, Charlie. Um, there are so many challenges ahead for juniors. The decisions to not count the last grading period are adversely affecting so many. Universities are now saying they may uh, make SAT, ACT scores optional, so GPA is even more important. Is there a way to have a particular student's case reviewed, especially those with 504s in place? Um, Bruce, do you have any insight? I know we talked about um, the impacts of this grading, and this has been a concern with the board. Um, and with the administration as well in terms of the impacts of this decision regarding grading? Yes, th there's no way that we can know every single situation and the way that it affects um, individual students. Um, and so I think we won't know unless they let us know what the issues are. Now, we did make a decision and we're gonna abide by a decision. Uh, that doesn't mean we can't review individual cases and start to try to determine if there are things that we can do, um, but they may not be. And so um, we need to prepare for that. However, on the whole, I will tell you that watching the landscape um, and watching what colleges are saying about not counting SAT or ACT and looking at what the NCAA has done in terms of how they're looking at the spring semester, of 2020, I think students need to know and understand that colleges and other institutions are very well aware and are having the same kinds of problems that we're having with this spring semester. And so every student in the world essentially is in this same situation that you find yourself in. And so know that I think what becomes much more important for our current junior class is the package that they put together that highlights who they are as students and 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 what they should be what they look like um, so things like your personal statement your essay are going to become even more important i think in this selection cycle than even your gpa or your test scores or any of those things having said that if i was you as a junior i would be doing everything in my power to make sure that every aspect of my preparation for college applications is in as good shape as possible. That's what colleges are going to look like, look for. They're looking for the whole package. They really want to see who you are academically. They really want to see who you are as a person. They want to see how you serve others, how selfless you are, um, what your passions are, what your interests are, and how intellectually curious you are. And so you've got to highlight all of those things for yourself as you prepare uh, to put those application packages together. I know our high schools have exceptional counselors. I know we also have um, part-time career counseling or college counseling available for you. I urge you to make use of those resources. Um, reach out and we'll try to help you in every single instance that we can. John, um, Mr. Graham, there's been some questions about um, Accessing stuff in schools, we talked about it a little bit before you got in. Um, turning in textbooks, um, getting equipment, returning equipment, I know that's something else that you have been working on. Anything you can share with the group about um, getting back into schools and returning and, and taking um, materials back into the schools? So we are actively planning a process for students to return items back to school, um, working very closely with the athletic department, the fine arts department, and with our teaching and learning department. Um, spoke to, to Coach Horman today, as she and she will be working with our athletic coordinators with the possibility of starting as early as next week, uh, an opportunity for athletes to to start uh, returning items to to school and to receive some of their items that they left at school uh, the same with uh, uh, mr warshaw and the fine arts department on a plan and so we are actively working on a plan it will be a phased in plan as we know that students um, at different le levels need material and their items at different times um, and there there is some learning that is taking place that requires some of the um, 
the academic items like textbooks and things like that. So um, hopefully we can start allowing students into campuses in a very um, safe and healthy way to start returning items. Uh, but until we've worked out that final plan and communicated with the principals, I could not tell you the, the details yet, but uh, hopefully as, as early as next week, we can start getting some items back to our students and the returning of some of our items back to us. Bruce, we're getting some questions about um, distance learning, um, online learning. Um, there's a couple questions. I see one from Ryan at the top. Um, can we continue distance learning as an option next year? Um, I'm guessing this means as a as a as a choice option, or uh, could also interpret as a question regarding. Um, there's a lot of unknowns going into next year with a second wave of of COVID. Um, what are your thoughts or your insight to a student who might be asking that question? Yeah, it's really a great question, and it's the question that we're asking ourselves as well at the same time. Um, I don't think we know the answer to that question yet. I think uh, we still have you know, five or six weeks left to get through this year. Um, I think we don't know what's going to happen in terms of social distancing and isolation and orders that uh, entities and agencies, you know, bigger than us might make. So we, things are changing very rapidly. Um, as soon as we get information, we're trying to share that with you and with the community. We are certainly starting to think about and prepare, though, for the that we either back full time and we have everybody back in classrooms like normal. We're preparing for the eventuality of nobody's back and we're in this online environment of some kind. Um, I think we'll have to be much better prepared for that and have ways to be really effective with new information and standards and making sure that uh, things are as close to normal operation as possible. And then there's, of course, the third possibility, which is that it's a hybrid model of some kind, which means that some students are back in person and some are not, um, or that there's some kind of a staggered schedule if we're still on social distancing of some kind. So honestly, we don't know what that looks like. Uh, we will have to do a lot of work between now and then in order to pull any of that off, um, but know and understand that we're, we, we are talking about those things, we're thinking about those things, if you have great ideas, we'd love for you to push them out directly. Um, we're getting a questions about um, prom now. Um, and I think we could probably wrap it into some general answers about spring events period. We know there's lots of milestones and big events that everyone's missing this spring. I don't know if, John, you wanna start with this or do we wanna just pass this along to, we got all of our high school principals in here. They could just kinda, Go around the horn. I am good with the high school principals answering that question. All right, Arturo, you want to start us off with Glenn? Sure. So, um, based on the information that we received uh, last Friday, we are looking to um, cancel our prom um, because of access. So, that's uh, something that we were hoping that we wouldn't have to do, but it's, it's becoming a reality. Um, and, and we've had many conversations as high school principals about how do, what do we do to honor uh, our seniors and make, really making sure that that is a, a focus and priority for us. They've worked extremely hard over the last four years and are, and are well deserving um, of, of being celebrated. And so that is, that is a big focus of ours. We're, as we talked about, uh, meeting regularly this week to talk about graduation. Um, but we're also talking about things like yearbook distribution. We're talking about things like uh, distribu distributing caps and gowns and, and announcements. Um, we're going to do everything we can um, in this new reality to take advantage of every opportunity to celebrate our seniors. And so that, that we're going to try to make it fun while still making sure that everybody's safe um, in these times. And so um you know we, we can't we can't bring everybody together um like we had originally planned um, because of the restrictions but we can still make sure that we're honoring and celebrating to the very best of our ability and so we're doing that. mr simpson you want to weigh in from leander high school 
Yeah, our prom was originally scheduled for April the 4th and up until I think like um, Mr. Lomeli just stated up until Friday afternoon, we assumed that we would be able to go with an alternate plan and possibly either look for another a venue or possibly join another one of the high schools. Uh, that looks like that's becoming less and less of a possibility. So I did speak with the bookkeeper today and we'll begin looking at the um, at how we get those refunds back. So ours was originally scheduled for April the 4th. It doesn't look like we're going to get a makeup date on those. I agree with everything the Glenn principal said. Um, you know, we want to try to keep as many of those events on our calendar. We're flat running out of time for that one. And the, um, our focus is turned to things that come towards the end of the year, um, uh, you know, for our seniors, our senior awards, our graduations and things like that. So uh, we will be contacting families as soon as we can get with the bookkeepers to figure out how we'll be issuing refunds, at least from the Lander High School side. I'm pretty sure that's something the rest of the high schools are also working through, so. Well, I'll jump in and, uh, you know, kind of echo what the uh, principals have said, Mr. Lamilli and Mr. Simpson. For Cedar Park, we had uh, hoped to do something. We had hoped to do a, an alternative to our original venue when we got canceled, but that's looking like we're running out of uh, options there. So um, prom is, um, is officially canceled and we're turning our attention toward making sure that we can uh, you know, make a, a have a great celebration for graduation and honor the seniors in the best way possible. Um, got a little information about the parchment or the um, transcript question, and um, if it helps, I think that uh, what I'm hearing is that kids can still go into parchment.com and order their transcripts, just hold for final transcripts. So the process looks pretty much the same as it has been in terms of ordering through parchment. Mr. Johnson. Got to unmute. Happens to the best of us. It does, man. It taught me that, Corey. Um, so Paul Johnson, principal of Vista Ridge High School. We had prom scheduled for May 16th, so we were kind of the last holdout, I think, later than that. But with the governor's announcement, we have canceled the prom. So I know that's hard to hear for me it's kind of sobering to think of the finality of a thought that we would cancel school from spring break all the way till May 29th and all the implications of that and so I'm sorry that's where we are um, I think we're open as I'm sure a lot of the principals are if there's creative avenues to to do that I don't know of anything at this time uh, we have again we've canceled and uh, we're just trying to the next try to get the graduation piece tied up at this time too so sorry Ms. Simpson. So uh, we had a venue that we had held on to up until Friday. Uh, we pushed back the date originally and our prom committee had talked about knowing the situation of the other high schools. Um, we were holding the venue as long as possible to have an all senior prom. We wanted to extend that to all of our neighbor schools, uh, but given the announcement Friday, um, we don't know how much further we can hold on or push out that venue. Our prom committee has started exploring some of the things that they're talking about, just virtual op options um, or even looking at a way to bring our seniors back in the fall to do something that would honor that time period and allow them to have that social gathering piece once that's allowable again. Um, those things were still in the works. Uh, so with the announcement on Friday, uh, we're looking at a second plan. And if that second plan is not something we can send out as an option, then unfortunately we're looking at the same cancellation as the other high schools. And Mr. Little. Uh, yes, our actual, our venue canceled uh, on us, the Hyatt. So we uh, will not have the, the prom this year. They've rolled our deposits forward to next year. However, if for some reason where there's a, uh, a solution before school is over, that we could do an impromptu prom and use like using our LIC facilities in some way, of course we would do that in a heartbeat for our seniors. Um, we're also exploring homecoming as an option next year if this situation settles itself to 
to uh, maybe have a more formal homecoming and open that up to former uh, alumni so they could rejoin their friends in that in that atmosphere. But at this time, uh, it's all dependent on what we're allowed to do. So uh, we will not have the venue um, at the Hyatt obviously available to us this year, and uh, it'd have to be something in the district. If for some reason we were allowed to in in late May to have a, something, I'm sure we could put something together quickly. That would be great, but I'm not uh, confident that that's going to happen. So we're kind of focused on perhaps something for homecoming and really making sure those seniors come back for homecoming and whether they don't want to dance or involving them in some decisions and involving them on how they'd like to reconnect with their, uh, their class, uh, perhaps uh, in our October homecoming date um, and, and see what that would bring. We're getting questions about caps, gowns, um, your books, and things like that. I'm guessing that y'all are all individually kind of figuring that out. I'm just looking for some head nods. Does anybody have any specific information to share about caps and gowns and your books and things like that? Or is that still in the works and just wanting to wait yeah, to get that and share it out? Yeah, uh, Corey and the others can jump into. We, we actually discussed this partially on Friday and coming up with the window. Most of our caps and gowns have been produced and are at their plants. And so it's a matter of us coming up with some consistent times that we can make sure all the high schools are doing that rel relatively in the same windows. So our seniors can have those things as they're starting to get, you know, wanting to do some spring senior pictures and things like that. So that's a plan that we're working and we'll communicate that as soon as we've had a time to um, actually get we're waiting on that plan but they're also waiting to kind of hear on 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 how we're going to be able to pull that off here in the next you know two or three weeks um, with all the social distancing stuff still in place so we are waiting on some guidance from mr graham and i know he's talked about how we're going to get items and stuff like that over the next couple of weeks that's still something that we're working through and as soon as we get the green light that it that is something that the six of us have talked about Anybody else can jump in. I know you will, and Mr. Corey, Little. Yeah, Corey, we have two different vendors. So we have Herf Jones and Balfour. Uh, as far as Balfour, we fully intend to have a cap and gown for all the students who ordered them. And then um, depending on the graduation option that we have, if it, uh, we will make sure every student gets a picture in their cap and gown or a loaner cap and gown. But it looks like right now we're in pretty good shape as far as cap and gowns go if we're able to have some kind of a physical graduation ceremony for our students. Uh, Herf, and J Herf Jones is doing the same, so all the schools will probably receive something similar as far as cap and gown, and they've offered to do a drive-through option, so they'll be working with us to set that up for students and families to maintain social distancing, uh, but get that to them as quickly as possible. And I would just add that our, our time frame really hasn't changed a whole lot on, in terms of getting those items to, to students, so we're still on pace to get them out in a similar time frame that we normally would. So um, there's still some questions about graduation, different suggestions coming from students about um, being outdoors and staying and maintaining six feet apart, about um, waiting until July. Um, we even, we had a question, you know, an opinion about um, somebody saying that they would prefer a virtual graduation and then being able to keep with the normal timeline. Um, I know we already touched on this, John, but I know it's on the hearts and minds of lots of our seniors. Um, and I know that you guys are considering lots of things, but there's still, you know, questions to be had based on where we are um, as a state. Although the governor relaxed a lot of the, or some of the guidelines of opening up parks and opening up um, some businesses for, for drive up services, it's still um, five people or less to, to rooms. Is, is there any more insight you want to share, especially if maybe people will join us a little late? Corey, I just wanted to jump in there and just remind people that we are recording this webinar and all the questions that are coming in uh, because that, that input is really important to us. And so we will, we might not answer them right here live, but we are going to pass through those after the fact and share all that information with our high school principals. So thank you for sharing those questions, students, and continue to send us that feedback, please. And I guess maybe on that line, John, since we kind of already hit that we don't, we're working on a plan, there's been some meetings. Um, 
what is a good way for, for students to express their voice, I guess, on the topic of graduation? I know that was a subject taken on um, during the board meeting last week. I think all of those ideas are things that we are, are working through and talking about and, uh, and stuff. And so I do not want to speak for the high school principals, but uh, I would say that we welcome all ideas and uh, they, of course, can, can access our Let's Talk format to send in their ideas. But I would say our high school principals would be more than willing to, to have the students email them. Uh, any of the suggestions that they have, but no, we are, every option's on the table and we are looking at, at everything. Uh, I, I know that we're, it's hard to, to not be able to give you concrete information, but with the times changing as quickly and rapidly as they do, it's, it's something we're actively doing, but we're open to all ideas, but make sure that we, stay within the safety and health guidelines that not only we as a district would, would adhere to, but also following all state recommendations. So, but um, your emails to the principals, to myself, to Let's Talk, uh, any way that you would like to provide feedback uh, through that is up to you. And we will look at all of them. I know, Mr. Graham, I, I know that I think students will be comfortable knowing that, I mean, if we have a scenario where they don't feel comfortable, as principals, we're all going to work to make sure they get a, a what they need from graduation to, to have that experience. But we're really going to it's, have to have different scenarios depending on what the reality is on our particular graduation date. And I think we have some great plans. And, and most of the, the feedback coming in from students and parents fall within one of the scenarios that Arturo and and, and the principals and I have been working through with John, with John. So I feel like there is a new idea that's coming in that we haven't thought of. It's just a matter of what are the constraints, the social constraints that we'll be operating under, mainly around audiences. Uh, I feel pretty comfortable that we'll have a, a, a way to give a very um, uh, a meaningful graduation ceremony, but it may be look a little different than what the kids are used to. So, but certainly students, um, as always, if they're not comfortable with whatever our recommendation is, we're gonna work with those students to make sure that they get that experience. Hey, Corey, can I say thanks to the comment that came through from Jana about working hard and we absolutely will continue to work our hardest for for the students in this district. So there's not like Mr. Graham and Mr. Little said, there's not anything that we won't consider and we won't do um, to support our students in the safest and, and best possible way. So I appreciate the shout out and it really is our pleasure to be doing this work for you um, and on your behalf. And I just wanted to add um, that we, we understand um, that this is something that has created, uh, you know, a lot of stress, loss, wondering for everybody. Um, and we understand how important it is and how personal it is. And, and uh, we're experiencing some of that same loss as well. And want to make sure that uh, we understand that, you know, know. we kind of want some, some answers, right? We want some answers. We want some information. We're kind of in that place too. So we're working very hard every day right now to formulate a plan so we can communicate with you um, so that we're not in limbo, okay? So please know that that is, that is our intention right now is to move forward those recommendations, have everybody look at it and make sure that we're, we're all in this together to provide the great experience possible uh, and get that information to you soon. I, I also think it's important that students understand there's there's meeting the graduation commitment to the dates we've set to get students moving forward with college. And then there's the idea of bringing students back for a concluding activity to, to have some closure with their colleagues and their friends when, they, when we have an opportunity to do that. So I can see several different versions of, of, of uh, not necessarily graduation, but, uh, but different opportunities for kids to have some closure for their senior year and to feel good about what they're doing. And it may not just be that ceremony itself. It may be, uh, some things in the summer and maybe some things when we come back from school, making sure those kids have an opportunity to, uh, to have that closure with their friends uh, before they head off to their next, uh, their next adventures. And just to reiterate something that Dr. Gearing mentioned, we're seeing lots of questions regarding um, graduation suggestions. Please continue to submit those. We're capturing all of this. 
Um, and just to piggyback on what's been said a couple times, lots of different scenarios and options are being considered. And as Mr. Little put it, it's twofold. It's about um, the, the awarding of diplomas and completion of school and also bringing kids, uh, students back together um, for that peer activity. Um, Dr. Gearing, there's some questions about other items outside of graduation that I'm going to try to feed to you. Um, we got this, I know, in an email recently. There was a petition to wait Project Lead the Way courses. Um, how has COVID affected that petition? Um, will this be addressed for the 2020-21 school year? So we have taken up the issue of GPA and class rank, and that is right now in discussion with a committee. Um, of course, as we were starting that work, we got hit with this situation, and so some of that has slowed down. But we do realize that these are important topics that we have to continue to discuss. Um, I can't guarantee that we'll be ready for the start of next school year with a major change like that to GPA or class rank. Um, and so, but do know, please, that we, we hear your voice in this. We understand that these are important items to you. Um, we realize that this is not a perfect way of doing it, and uh, we, we are going to be looking at it very closely. We just want to make sure that we're not hurting any students in the process. And so um, we're, we're going to uh, have lots of opportunity for input from all stakeholders as we discuss what that might look like in the future going forward. Thank you, sir. There's a question about confirmed cases of COVID in LISD. Um, John, um, I'm going to let you kind of piggyback on this because I know Kristen's under you. My understanding is right now, because our buildings have been closed, um, typically if we have a contagious disease in one of our schools, for example, we've had whooping cough um, and other things in schools, um, the health department requires us to send a letter home, but because we've been closed, for so long um, and because of the different functions of the health departments responding to this, um, we may not have uh, received that same communication, especially since we're closed for the rest of the year. Is there anything about that public health notification, John, that you'd like to add? No, Corey, you actually said it uh, quite well. Uh, we are so far past uh, the, the point where uh, uh, we would, uh, be responsible for making those announcements to parents because of school being closed that we are we are no longer receiving uh, notifications uh, from the health department that would re that would uh, require us to make any announcements and and we are getting updated by the health department but not about individual cases that it would impact our students Bruce and, and John, you might like this one. It's a little bit different than the questions we've had, but I know it's something that I've heard been heard in conversations. Um, Natalie asks, if we are allowed to go back to school in the fall, can we paint our parking spots? The money can go towards Project Grad and other schools in the area have done it successfully. John, you're shaking your head. I know this was a request early on that we started talking about. Um, we do want to try to um, hear student voice. And so we're listening very carefully to that. Um, please know and understand that it does create a maintenance issue for us over time uh, that we have to consider. But at the same time, we wanna to try to um, make your years as special as possible. And so I know the high school principals have been talking about this together. I'm not sure that I know the outcome, to be honest. So I don't know if John uh, has some extra insight or anybody wants to jump in, but... Um, I know we've certainly been talking about the possibility. I am actually going to defer because this is not one of the areas that I work, work with. I do have a student that turned 16 in a month, and so I know this is important to her, uh, but uh, I am not involved in these, these discussions, and so I'm not sure where the conversation ended. I don't, I don't think we actually, uh, this all came up kind of in mid discussion about these items, but um, for example, at Vandergriff, parking is at a premium and parking is an issue. So one of the concerns, I've been at schools where we've painted spots before and students will, uh, they have a spot, will park closer. If they're in athletics, they'll park somewhere else and leave that spot unavailable to someone else to use. So it can be a challenge much more and each campus has unique 
circumstances. It may not be a parking issue at one campus, but certainly premium parking at Vandergriff has been a consideration on reserving spots and making sure everybody has, has equitable access to a spot. Um, we certainly want kids to be able to personalize their senior year or any year, um, but that we haven't, uh, we had left off, I think, talking about it individually as campuses, but um, the COVID situation kind of derailed a lot of our discussions on that topic, which I'm sure we'll pick up as soon as we physically get back on campus. But um, I don't recall, let's say other principals remember, I don't think we decided, but we, we did re uh, acknowledge that each campus has a little different take on it because of the parking situation at their, at their spots. So there are some questions about doing these Zoom calls, uh, maybe one just for seniors, maybe specific at the campus level, maybe doing one again like this for the superintendent. We're going to try them this week, see how they go, um, and certainly support and try to find ways to get student voice as much as possible. I want to answer a couple more of these questions real quickly, um, and then maybe try to turn somebody on um, in terms of getting a student on the Zoom call um, to maybe hey, Corey, before participate you in here. Yeah, go before, ahead. You jump, before you jump into that, I think it's important the students know that we just actually this week, uh, the librarians and, and the tech staff worked to get the webinar feature available to us. And so I think that uh, you'll be seeing a lot more opportunities there as the principals get this tool in their hands and we're going to be using it. I know I plan to use it with the senior class uh, this week. I was waiting for this particular webinar to occur before we started rolling it out. But we just got access to that uh, premium webinar feature. So we're excited to start incorporating that in for students and involving them more. But um, just so they know, we're kind of learning on the fly as well. And I know the other principals as well. Um, it's it's much, much more effective to do a webinar with a with 700 seniors than it is to do a Zoom. So um, that I would say they're going to be seeing a lot more of that uh, after this week. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that update. And I appreciate that I get to be the guinea pig and trying to figure this out for you, Mr. Little. And uh, we'll definitely share some insights on how we set this up. Because um, I think it's working well. We're hearing from a lot of students. We're getting lots of questions about end of the year tests. Um, AP tests, I know that the College Board has moved the AP exams to the internet um, or having an online delivery mechanism. Um, end of course exams um, are questions coming in here. Um, general grading period questions. Um, Bruce, do you want to go ahead and take these questions from a district level? I know Dr. Benz was trying to join us, but he hasn't been able to make it in yet. Sure. Um, we'll tell you what we do know. We do know that AP is doing their tests online. Um, students should be working with their teachers closely to help them prepare for that. I know our college board has put out a lot of materials to help students get prepared for those, uh, especially what they look like, because they'll be quite different from what I understand. Um, I don't think there's any multiple choice sections. I think it's all FRQs or um, and uh, free response questions. And so uh, that will certainly be different. We do know that IB has canceled all of their testing and uh, that leaves some of our students in a little different situation um, than our AP students. Um, uh, as in terms of end of course testing, that's all through the state. All state testing has been canceled. And so there will be no end of course tests um, in terms of final exams, I believe, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that high schools have already um, canceled their end of year exams. Am I correct on that one? Well, Rouse, Rouse is going to, so I hope that's okay. <laughs> yes, we determined that there's no final exam for all high schools. Okay, so, so it sounds like, um, end of year exams are probably not going to happen at the high school level. Um, your regular grading, what's important to us at this point in time, I try to reiterate this as much as I can, is you learning the standards that are necessary for you to take the next step. So if you're a senior, we want to make sure that you have as many tools in your tool belt to go to the next step, whatever that is. If that's college, career, military, whatever that is, a technical school, I don't really care what it is, but your next step is gonna require you to be ready. And we wanna make sure that we take this opportunity over the next couple of weeks to get you as ready as possible. And you can help us with that by asking the right questions, by helping us to understand what your need is. Um, get with your teachers, they are there to help you, that's their job. Um, and so make sure that they understand what it is you need. If you're an underclassman, 
then understand that we want to make sure that you have the standards mastered that are going to be absolutely necessary for you to take the next step next year in the next grade level. Um, some of you are worried about the grade. I would worry less about the grade and more about the learning. That's what's going to be really important for you as you move forward. Um, we got a couple questions. Um, one question came in about through email about construction. Um, is coronavirus affecting the schedule for construction? Um, so right now construction is continuing. Uh, most of the, there have been some guidelines for Travis County and Williamson County about construction, but um, we continue to hear that our construction projects are moving forward. The concern might be regarding materials and supplies um, through um, issues with our supply chain and ordering. Um, things that might have been needed at the end of the project but as of right now everything seems to be moving um, smoothly and in terms of construction going forward um, the question also says specifically about will they have to be in portables it depends on what project um, and what timeline is specifically but we have not heard about any slowdowns or significant slowdowns of construction and in fact that's one of the big things about getting students and staff back in buildings to retrieve materials so we can stage construction in certain areas of schools that have projects going on. Um, this one I think is a question you'll like, Bruce. Um, so what has this virus, this experience made you learn? Are you making any positive changes to next year, year-round school, online options, any big changes or just big things that you'd like to discuss? Um, Skylar also says, also a big shout out and thank you to everyone here who's trying their best in keeping us students learning. So thank you for that comment, Skylar. Yeah, thank you, Skylar. I, I really think that this is an opportunity for us to do some things differently, for us to learn uh, what's important and what was busy work or what grades you know, didn't mean much or things like that. Um, I, I will honestly tell you that I don't think we really know what the new normal will look like. I think what we do know is that we have an opportunity to stop doing some things that weren't working well and to start doing some things that we know will work well in the future. Uh, what I want you to know is that what is important to us is deep learning and you really getting the tools necessary to prepare you for your next, next step. We want you to be successful, happy adults. That's our only goal. And so we want to make sure that you have what you need as you step forward, whether you're a senior this year and going away to your next adventure or if you're an underclassman and coming up another grade level um, in one of our schools and so help us to understand what that is uh, help us to understand what it is you need as you move forward make sure that you're connecting to your interests and passions that's important if you love something you'll do it well um, and so make sure that you're trying a lot of different things so that you can really realize what it is that you love to do and as importantly what it is you don't love to do so let us know what you need Bruce, we're also getting questions about students who have incompletes and are um, concerned about um, getting credits for graduation. Um, can you answer or give some guidance as to what that will look like for students? Yes, so uh, we are working as hard as we can to make sure that every, each and every one of you has the opportunity to graduate and be successful and go forward. If you're having trouble with credits of any kind, you need to reach out. You need to make sure that you're reaching out to the teacher involved. If you're not being successful with that, or if that's not working for you for some reason, and I don't really care what the reason is, then you find somebody else to reach out to. Um, your high school principals are available. Your high school assistant principals are available. Your counselors, whoever it is that you can make a connection to, we want you to reach out and tell us what the issues are. If we don't know what the issues are, we can't help you to solve them. If we know where your problems are, we can help you to solve them, and that's our job. Um, so don't hesitate to reach out. You're not going to be in trouble. We're not going to uh, paint you in a corner of some kind. We want to help you to be successful. So let us know what you need. Anything that maybe principals might want to add to that question? I know um, y'all are definitely closer to the students than we are. Um, how are you all handling students who might be having uh, questions about um, incompletes and making up for credit. I think Dr. Gearing made some really good points about wh whomever you need to contact to get answers, um, please reach out uh, and you can start with us as principals. 
Um, I know our teachers are in a lot of learning conversations, a lot of professional development conversations about how to make this adjustment work for all students. And so we need to know if we're missing the mark on that. Um, I think that was one of the things, Corey, I was hoping to find out today from questions is how the remote learning aspect is going. Is there anything that we need to address immediately? Uh, but we can get that feedback on our individual campuses as well. So it, it's really important that we're able to partner with you in every possible way. And sometimes that means finding new ways to make sure that that learning occurs for each and every one of you. You know, that's a good. I just wanted to prompt this and then let Charlie respond to um, we have gotten a lot of great logistical questions and I know graduation has come is at the hearts and minds of so many of our of our students and our parents and our families. So we definitely appreciate this opportunity to answer that we will. I don't see a reason why we won't just share this whole thing out. Um, it looks like we'll be able to share it out without um, having any student names or identifying things. So I don't see a reason why we can't just share this whole video out after the fact. So um, we can go ahead and do that. I'd, I'd like to use this last four minutes and we can go a little bit over too to kind of address what, what Christine, Ms. Simpson just said um, regarding just general uh, feedback on um, learning. If you want to use the question and answer, that's fine. You can use the chat function. I'll start to monitor that a little bit better. Um, just want to know how your general remote learning experience is, is going and any insight on how we can make that um, better or what's working well. Um, and while people can go in there in the chat right now, Charlie or Mr. Little, do you want to go ahead and share what you were what you were about well, to say? Well, our first priority was make sure we didn't have obstacles to access the learning through technology, and I feel like we've got a pretty good handle on that right now. So that the, the, there are some students that have certain challenges, and we're uh, accommodating those students and making sure that they're they're included in the learning. But for for us, we're feeling like the teachers have found that balance where the work is appropriate for the situation and uh, i'm hearing from most students and parents that there are some parents that want more rigor and more work and there are some parents that feel very comfortable with where we're at but i would say that if the student is willing to engage with the teacher that we're not seeing any problems we're not seeing any incompletes if they engage uh, the main incompletes i'm seeing are when a student uh, tunes out or is not engaging at all uh, with the teacher and uh, we have a process where uh, the teacher reaches out uh, and then the ap for that student will reach out and we're making every effort, a concerted effort to reach those students and determine why they're not engaging and making sure it's not a, uh, an access issue or uh, anything that we can, we can assist with. And if a student uh, is willing, just like in the, uh, the physical world, if they want to engage with that teacher, I'm finding that the teachers are bending over backwards to make sure these kids are successful. And uh, I think a student will really have to go out of their way to get an incomplete unless if they're engaging with that teacher, to go to the teacher, department chair, and AP and principal were all available for those kids. And I'm actually uh, surprisingly have not had a lot of information from parents saying that, the, that, that they're not getting that support. But uh, again, it's, it's the student's responsibility to really engage with that teacher if they're, if they're struggling with that. Uh, and the teachers are empowered to make the flexibility. I think it's also important to note, we built this model, uh, this phase two, on the idea that there would be sick staff, sick parents, sick kids, and that we weren't gonna have this full this full access like right now I think we're lulled into a sense that this is the new normal but if a third of my staff or students were sick uh, then we would have a you know a student may want a grade or a GPA and want that rank until they become sick and they fall behind and then they realize they're at a competitive disadvantage I think the passing complete really gives the kids a, a fair way to finish the year in the event that they may become ill and I think we keep forgetting that the reason we're in this situation is we are going to have people that become ill. We are going to have staff that become ill. We have to have something that will work uh, and not have to constantly change the process, change the methodology. And I will say on behalf of, I think most principals or all the principals would agree, our teachers empowered that, that, that pass incomplete allows that teacher to make decisions for that student that are correct without worrying about equity of grades or equity of rank. So um, that's what I love about this right now is the kids are actually taking responsibility for their learning. But um, again, it's, it, uh, I think if a student is willing to engage and they don't have an obstacle to the technology, uh, they're gonna be successful with what we've got set up for them. Dr. Gehring, you shared an article on your Twitter a couple of weeks ago that really gravitated to me and I think maybe it, it reigns true to what Mr. Little just said. Um, this isn't really remote learning, it's emergency remote learning. It was something put together in action and with the understanding that everyone we're all in this together, but we're all experiencing this in very different ways. Um, I turned my camera off a few minutes ago because my kid walked in 
um, to say to say hi. He wants a cookie, um, and I have one one child and a spouse at home, so I'm I'm sure there's lots of people feeling this in lots of different ways. Um, uh, Dr. Gearing, do you want to share some more insight into what that idea and that concept is? Yeah, thanks, Corey. You know, I, I think the other thing that we want you to remember is that we're adults and, and we're the educators in charge, but we're just human. We're just like you. And this is new for us. This is a totally new situation. We don't honestly know exactly what we're doing. And we're having to kind of build this airplane while we're trying to fly it at the same time. And so I think what Mr. Little said is so, so, so important. For those kids who are reaching out, you know, you can help us. You are creative, young, enthusiastic minds, and your ideas are great, and, and we need that support to get through this together. I think this is the opportunity for us to really engage together as a learning community and to understand that we get better when we're learning together, and we're learning just like you are. This is not something we had planned to do. This is not something we were prepared to do, um, and we're not going to get it anywhere close to even good, never mind perfect, in before the end of May. Um, but if we have to be in this situation by August, we better get our act together and we better be better than we are right now. Um, but even then we won't be perfect, but we can get better together. We can learn this together. We can survive this if we do it together. Um, and so, uh, I saw a chat that said, you know, not everybody feels as optimistic and confident as, as some of us sound, uh, you know, on a webinar like this, and that may be true, but maybe you can help them. Um, by reaching out and say, you know, this is what I need. And if you did it this way, it would help me so much. Uh, and, and they may just respond positively to you. So this is not a perfect situation. This is uh, pretty stressful for all of us. Um, I have four teenagers in my house. We regularly break the internet um, and have to make do. And, uh, you know, it's brought us closer together, though. And we're doing things that we hadn't done for quite a while. So really appreciate all of you being patient with us as we learn together with this, with you. I meant to do this a little bit earlier. We wanted to capture who was in the room um, or the webinar. So I just launched a poll uh, to real quickly, just let us know what school you're with, what grade level you're with. Um, we'll send out some way to collect feedback on how this went. Um, I have a list of everyone who signed up and registered so we can get some feedback and some ideas we'd love to have. Something like this, maybe we might need to do something that is a little more broken out where we can get more feedback on remote learning. Um, although we definitely appreciate the opportunity to share um, the logistical questions and answers that we know are so important to students. It sounds like the high school principals are gonna be doing more of that now, um, that they have access to the tools to be able to do it and, um, and being able to kind of refine this remote world we're living in. Um, while that poll is kind of being populated here, um, Dr. Gearing, do you have anything else you want to share with the group before we conclude? Again, we will put, we will post this and share this video out um, so everyone can access it. Um, we'll probably do it on Facebook and on YouTube um, and share it out via Twitter so people know where the link is. Um, Dr. Gearing, anything else you'd like to share before we conclude this webinar? You know, I, I don't have a lot of words of wisdom. The only thing I would say to you is make sure you stay connected. Stay connected to each other. Stay connected to your teachers. Stay connected to your school. Um, that may be difficult to do and may require a little bit of extra effort. Um, also take this opportunity to do some things differently with your own community, your own family at home. Um, you have time this spring that you might not have had before because you were involved in so many activities or busy with school and so many other things. And sometimes we get given these opportunities for a reason. So take that opportunity to connect to the people that you love the most. Uh, that is a really important part of what I think can happen. Um, and you know, something to think about is that when you enter summer this time, and things may be closer back to normal uh, by then, um, you'll be well rested, hopefully, and, and you'll have a, a different perspective of of what could happen in that three months of time. So connect to your peers, connect to your teachers, love your family, and most importantly, stay healthy, stay well, listen to the guidelines that are out there. They're there for a reason. There are experts advising us on what to do. Make sure that you listen um, and that you follow those guidelines. Thanks, Corey, and thank you everybody out there for what you're doing. Thank you, everyone. Um, our, our hearts and minds are with you all. Um, and thank you for sharing and look for more opportunities to give 
us feedback and to share your voice. Take care, everyone.